Well, statistics show that more women than men are earning college degrees, more women than men are employed, and women are climbing the corporate ladder in record numbers, not to mention more women are launching their own businesses. And small business expert and best-selling author Susan Solovic joins us with tips on how to become your own boss. Hi, Susan. Welcome. Hi, Nikki. It's a pleasure to be here. It's a pleasure to have you. This is this is an empowering conversation we're about to have. So let's first talk about how do we know that we're truly ready to launch a business? There is no magic formula, Nikki. <laughs> Actually, what I tell business owners or hopeful business owners is to make sure they have a great idea, okay. then test that idea. Make sure that there's a market for that idea, that people really want your product idea mm -hmm. or service idea. And then thirdly, make sure that you can earn enough money selling that product or service to create a viable business. And really, that's probably the most important part. Definitely. But I will say that what's really exciting today, as opposed to when I started my first business years and years ago, mm -hmm. is that there's so much information on the internet today True. to help you start and grow a business that really can give you a definite advantage. Oh, it definitely does. But since we have you here, you know, once you get past that preliminary work and research, what are the first steps that you would recommend to starting your successful homegrown or small business? Well, of course, I would recommend that you start off slowly. Okay. You know, one of the things a lot of small business um, hopefuls say to me, well, I've got this great idea, but I don't know where to go find the money to start this business. Right. And they've got this grand scale that's going to cost a lot of money. Most small businesses start with their own private funds as the resource of their capital, okay. as credit card debt, or reaching out to family and friends. So start small. You know, the great thing today is with technology, mm -hmm. you can start a business out of your home. It True. used to be that that really wasn't acceptable, but today you can work out of your home. You can sell all over the world. You can look like a big business. Mm -hmm. And the other great thing is because of technology, you can do business anywhere at any time. And that's particularly true today with the, I, the concept of smartphones and oh, mobile yeah. devices. You know, I can practically run my business from the palm of my hand, Nikki, which is <laughs> amazing. amazing? Yeah. Companies like AT&T provide a host of mobile applications designed to help small businesses run their businesses better, smarter, and faster. So, for example, one of my favorites is mobile uh, payment application, okay. which, for example, if I'm out on the road selling my books, uh -huh. you know, I can take credit card and debit card payments right on my smartphone or oh, on wow. my tablet, and it's so easy. I can also, companies that have a lot of people out on the streets delivering things, GPS applications that allow them to track and monitor their staff, as well as to be more uh, fuel efficient. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, so there are, and then also things like field service people who are out doing repair work. There are applications that allow you to track inventory via your smartphone or mobile device instead of having to wait to go back to the office and checking to see if you have that particular part in stock. Gosh. It's a huge asset for small businesses. Isn't it amazing? I mean, who would think we'd see the day? I feel like we live in the Jetsons <laughs> world now. I mean, it's amazing. And these are all such good tips, but what are some of the common mistakes that you find women making when they start a new business? I think one of the biggest mistakes that women make mm -hmm. is the fact that, well, really any small business owner, is the fact that they start off a business and they try to be too many things to too many people and they lose their focus. You need to decide what is my core business strategy and then what's the value I bring to my marketplace. If you do the same old, same old thing, you're just in another commodity business. Mm -hmm. So you want to make sure that you're delivering value, something that's just a little bit unique that they can't get anywhere else, that they have to switch their buying powers uh, habits to come to you so okay. for example Nikki today I'm coming to you live from breadwinners cafe in uptown Dallas Texas this is a family owned business they've oh. been in business for 18 years Love people that. line up to get in here when they open in the mornings so clearly they have done a great job of defining their unique value to their marketplace in order to create such a loyal fan base oh yeah they're definitely a success story and there's so many of them here in New Mexico as well we want even more of those success stories so where can viewers find more information from you? Well, from me, they can find me on my website, which is susansolovic.com, okay. S-O-L-O-V-I-C.com. And also, I'd like to suggest everybody go to Small Biz, that's Small Biz with a Z, okay. .att .com, smallbiz.att.com, 
you'll find a lot of great resources that AT&T is investing in to help small businesses start and grow and also protect their businesses, Nikki. That's a huge issue yes. because right now we're in the heart of tornado season, hurricane season. We're oh, seeing those right. horrible fires out in Colorado. And you know, when small businesses get hit by a disaster, we often lose our data. And AT&T offers an opportunity to back up that data online. Definitely, we can't control mother nature, but we can control how we protect ourselves. That's right. Thank you so much, Susan, great information. We appreciate you being with us this morning. My pleasure, Nikki. Thanks again.